as we get closer to the return of Christ, that's what he says will happen. And as wickedness increases, the weight of darkness will increase with it. We must know what it is that God says outweighs, has greater power and greater significance than darkness. Don't you think? There's one story that has gone down in history as perhaps the most famous story ever told of a man who was evil. And I mean the epitome of evil. And he had an encounter with a light so weighty that it stopped him dead in his tracks and his soul was converted overnight. And his name is Saul. As he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly, boom, a light from heaven shone around him. Falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? But did you pick up on the key elements in his own testimony that bring this story to life? Look again at what he said from his own mouth. Chapter 26 now, flip back. 12 through 14, Paul in his own words, I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests at midday. Time out. I know a couple of you have. Any of you ever been to the Middle East? Raise your hand. Okay, a couple there, a couple there. At noon, how hot is the sun at midday? How bright is that sun? Pretty hot in the Middle East, right? O king, at midday, I saw on the way a light from heaven, say the words, brighter than the sun. How many of you have ever been out on the beach? And you're out on the beach? Yes, everybody. Uh, you better have. If not, you have homework. How many of you have ever been out on the beach when it's 90, 100 degrees? Have you ever said something like, oh, the sun is so oppressive today? You ever said that? That's heat and you feel the weight of it. That's New Jersey. Imagine Israel, the Middle East. Paul's saying, yeah, that brightness of the sun, this is brighter and weightier. That tells you the kind of power that this had. Keep reading. A light from heaven brighter than the sun that shone around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground. I've seen pictures and paintings of this, of the road to Damascus, and almost without fail, it's Paul laying on the ground and all of his buddies are looking like this. Wrong. you got to take all the accounts and put them together. Paul says this light from heaven was so powerful, it stopped all of the evil intentions of all these men at once. They all were set to do evil against God's people, and one shot from a light, boom, stopped evil in its tracks. You will go no further. All of these men on the ground. I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. This is a saying, a Hebrew idiom. It's a saying. It's kind of like what we would say, um, it's really hard for you to go against the grain. It's really hard for you to swim upstream or walk against the, the tides, that kind of a thing. Same exact expression in the Hebrew culture, okay? Here's what Jesus is saying to him. God is doing a thing, Saul. You can't stop it, and you're walking against what he's doing. It's really hard for you to kick against the goads. You better think about what you're doing. That's what he's saying. Satan has the power to keep minds blind. Look at what Saul, later Paul, eventually wrote about this. Satan, 2 Corinthians 4, who is the God, lowercase g, of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. And who better to write this other than the one to whom it happened? He was in this camp, blind. I thought I was the good guy in the story. I couldn't see Jesus as he actually was. I was blind and I had no idea. 
They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers by keeping them imprisoned. And here's how. Listen. He keeps the minds of unbelievers imprisoned to false philosophies, false ideologies about what life's all about, false sciences that they believe, false religions, False thoughts about God that they kind of picked up along the way. Well, I got this from this source and this from this source. And they create a worldview that isn't real. Satan keeps people enslaved to the darkness. Oh, please listen. By pretending himself to be light. And inviting people to believe, listen to this, that the darkness that they believe is actually light. And the Christians have it all wrong. Jesus spoke about this, and the language that he uses can be very confusing. It's one verse, two verses, excuse me. I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to try my best to to make it simple, okay? Jesus said, Matthew 6, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Now, here's where it can get confusing. If then, the light in you is darkness. So there's a category in the mind of Jesus of a kind of light that isn't light at all, that's actually darkness. If the light in you is darkness, how great, say the word heavy. You could just as easily translate this word heavy. How heavy is that darkness? The weightiness of darkness is that it can move people who believe they're actually being moved by the light. Remember, in this story, Saul thought he was the righteous one. He was being told by his school of education, go and arrest these troublemakers. He thought he was the good guy. He had no idea he was the villain of the story. What an awakening! He had no idea until he finally entered into the light. He needed a divine intervention. Something that was heavier than the darkness that had gripped his soul. And that intervention came by way of light. As I steer this in for a landing, church, there are only two kinds of people in the world. Those of you who were like Saul before he encountered the light and those of you who were like Saul three days later. That's it. There's no, none of these in between. Oh, no, this guy's a little gray. And this, nope, two categories. You're either like Saul before his conversion or you're like Saul after his conversion. That's it. And the only question you have to ask is, have you come into the light of truth? Now, please don't make the mistake of thinking that every single conversion is like this road to Damascus experience. It is not. This is actually quite rare. It still does happen miraculously like this, but make no mistake. The components of conversion are all exactly the same. You need to come into the light and let God tell you what the truth is about himself and about you. And you need to let that light guide you from every day forward. The light of God's truth is a revelation so weighty that it changes how you see everything. If you'll come into this same light, God will do for you the same thing that he did to the chief of sinners. He'll begin to change your soul.